Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 68. This week, I'm going to be showing you the setup that I use to photograph shooting bullets with the air gap flash and the camera axe. This is a corner of my basement that you're not used to seeing. This is the corner, not where I shoot videos, but where I shoot projectiles. And uh, before I get into this, I want to give a special thanks to Alan Saylor. He's uh, got an amazing set of high-speed photography shots on Flickr, which I'll link into this show. And uh, in addition to that, he also details a lot of his setup. And uh, a majority of what I'm doing here is uh, based on ideas that sort of he shared out. So this took a few days, well, maybe about a day to set up. And uh, here's the pellet rifle that shoots projectiles. It's a break action. You put the pellet in back there and it's held into place by this vise. Got another vise here that holds the projectile sensor which is connected to the camera axe. Camera axe is also connected to some flashes that I'll show you in a little bit and we're in the projectile menu right now. So with the projectile menu you just enter in the number of inches you want the bullet to be from that this end of the projectile sensor so right now it's set to be 26.1 inches from here to where the bullet is when it's photographed and I have a ruler set up down here that kind of helps me sort of measure things out so over here is my uh, stack of future victims and I've got some pellets a few miscellaneous things over there oh this is pretty important so I've got some relatively inexpensive uh, UV filters just sort of clear filters that I put on the end of my lens this is something that Alan says has saved a few of his lenses so I've, I've sort of put them on uh, my lens as well and over here we've got the air gap flashes. I've actually got two. Uh, this one is mostly lighting up the target. This one over here is mostly to light up the background, but they do each illuminate the other a little bit. Uh, here's the camera. I've got a Canon 100 millimeter macro lens. Uh, the camera is really not that important in this kind of uh, experiment. You just need to have manual control of the focus and you also need to have a controllable shutter lag. It's nice to have a nice macro lens like this though. And I've also just got a wireless remote connected to it. That's what this thing is. That lets me, while I'm over at the uh, gun, in the dark because this is all done in in you know a very dim lighting environment I've got the lights on now but when I actually shoot things you have to turn off the lights and uh, open up the shutter for a few seconds and then fire the rifle so I'm, with this remote I'm able to stand right next to the rifle um, and basically trigger the camera and then pull the trigger on the, the pellet gun and every then the camera axe sort of handles everything else. This is a stand I've set up for the projectile or the targets and uh, that foam in the background is used for uh, the colored backgrounds. I also tried some paper back there but uh, you know you're able to reuse the foam some before it gets too tattered. And that's just, I think they call that a lab jack. Um, I found this on, on Amazon. It wasn't that expensive. I'm just using <laughs> cinder blocks to hold the flashes in place. I tried to uh, use some tripods, but I just couldn't fit them in, in this space very well. So, um, And I can't have the flashes back too much farther because you want them really close to the target because they're, they're really not that bright. Uh, but this allows me to keep a nice low ISO on the camera because the, the flashes are pretty close to the target and uh, I've got this little plastic shield sort of set up around the target to catch some of the uh, 
stuff that the debris from the targets uh, it doesn't catch everything I've got another target back here and you can sort of see there's places where things have kind of gotten back uh, beyond the initial shield so it's nice to have that double layer of protection in the basement because my wife said I can get this corner messy but I'm not allowed to get the whole basement messy and this here is a pellet trap it's another one of the suggestions from Alan's Flickr page that I'm using it's uh, I'm using a quarter inch aluminum plate that deflects the bullet down and then into a bunch of cardboard and some sheets of scrap plywood and things to sort of just capture the bullet in a nice safe manner oh yeah here's one other suggestion that Alan recommended I have this rod and I'm able to just sort of stick this into the barrel Ugh, I don't know how this is going to turn out on video I can't get it in from this angle but anyways this just slides into the barrel and then it allows me to line up the targets very nicely so that works amazingly well I can position the bullet exactly where I want and there's you know no aiming involved which is nice because I probably would have bad aim this just tells me exactly where the pellets gonna go by inserting the the brass tube into the uh, pellet rifle one other thing people requested um, from the previous video was to actually hear and see how these air gap flashes work so we'll just power this one on you can tell there's a, a little hum to them when they're on so there's no question of whether they're on or not which is nice and uh, this here is the test fire so it does make a little bit of noise when it triggers like that and you can also trigger it with the camera axe like I'm gonna do now so that's pretty much how these air gap flashes operate when I'm actually about to uh, destroy a target like this what I'll typically do is I'll typically take one shot uh, like this one where I use the flashes to make sure the exposure and everything is pretty reasonable then I take the target off of the, the stand and I take another shot just to make sure that the, the camera axe distance for the projectile sensor is right and it's about where I want it to be in the photo. Lastly, I uh, take a third shot. So that's pretty much my setup. I'll be showing a bunch of photos now. Thanks for watching.